Welcome to the game. I'm Russ Cohen. We've got Nico Riesgo. Go, Nico, how are you? Russ Cohen, my man. <laughs> and Michael Jello, who impersonated Nico last week. Yeah, the original is uh, better than the uh, facsimile. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. That was a good try, though, Mike. That was a great try. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Let's talk a little baseball. Uh, we might as well get the failing New York Mets out of the way. Uh, <laughs> I I certainly have not given up on the season, and, and I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, even though they've lost these games in the standings and they're two and a half out, I lived through 1973, and you got to believe, and they gained 12 games in the standings in 10 weeks, going from a particular date in August until September 21st when, when they won the pennant. So at this point, it's built into me not to give up. Now, I get – all that has transpired, but on the positive side now, it looks like Bias, who took himself out of the game that I was at yesterday, uh, doesn't have that bad of a hip, so maybe that's only a couple games. We do hear DeGrom is a little closer. Lindor is a week or two away. So, Mike, even though the Phillies have the lead and the Mets won't play them for a while, uh, and they are going to go on this West Coast swing. I'm not sure if they're, the West Coast teams are coming in. They're going there. I haven't looked. Um, Mm -hmm. but that right now, that series didn't decide the season. It just was like one of those things that you don't want to see because you lose, you you know, you lost those games in the standings. But I think Met fans have gone to the direction of, um, making too much out of it and the losses and those fans making too much out of it with the wins. Well, it's funny because I was listening to New York radio this afternoon and to hear some of the Mets fans. They're more pissed off at Sandy Alderson and yeah. Steve Cohen for the fact that at the deadline, you know, they got Baez, which they needed because Lindor was hurt, but they didn't add any pitching. And, you know, with the uncertain situation when it comes to, you know, Syndergaard and DeGrom, I mean, Syndergaard's a yeah. long-term thing, but DeGrom, you know, first we heard August, then we heard September, and they don't want to push this guy because he's special. So, you know, they should have been more proactive and gone out and added. And now I think you see, you know, you've got uh, Walker, who's not pitching as well as he did earlier in the season. And you could say that maybe, you know, after a shortened year, you know, the, a, a full work a workload uh, on over 162, you know, he, he's starting to slow down. They don't have enough arms. And, you know, the, Lindor was supposed to be a key bat in the middle of their lineup, and they're missing him too. And Conforto's having probably the worst year of his career. So, I mean, a lot of things are contributing to this, and I, I you know, we'll see if they can pull it out. I'm not I'm saying that they should, that Met fans should just say it's screw it, it's over with. But you know, it's not encouraging right now. No, I get it, but you know, I did write about the uh, Alderson slash Cohen not spending the right money, Nico, and they did get a pitcher, Mike, Trevor Williams, who when they got him, uh, you know, Sandy Alderson said, well, we're going to send him to AAA because it's procedural, but if they would have gotten Berrios, Nico, they wouldn't have sent him to AAA. So that was just a a lot of baloney that he tried to sell Met fans, and they didn't buy it. Yeah, whatever the procedure is, it's about to win the game, okay? If that's the procedure, then you've got a major league pitcher ready, and you need to win. And, uh, you know, some of their decisions that they're making, uh, you just uh, are mind boggling. We were just waiting and waiting. We've been holding on all season long. They've got us kind of on the edge of our seats. They've been in first place carrying that nearly the, from since day one. Um, and then they, they've hit the dog days and we can see this is where the real men need to step up. And uh, we need, uh, Peter Alonso to have another resurgent and, and, and really carry this team on his back because he's really the only one hitting. Yeah, no question. I mean, that's that's a big deal, Mike. I mean, it's like uh, Alonzo has been doing well, actually. He's done better at getting on base and other things. And actually, um, Walker was, was good yesterday, Mike. I mean, he gave up the home runs, but those were really the only hits. He gave up four, four hits, three of them were homers, but four hits. So in that small ballpark, that was something good. He actually got until the sixth inning. So in that regard, that was a positive. The negative was... While Zach Wheeler's always good, they didn't run the counts. They didn't try to do anything but swing in early, and it, that was mind-boggling. I, I mean, I I left a little early, and I saw the bus getting back in, and I figured they were just, you know, 
shooting to get on that bus. But, um, you know, Nimmo was trying to, to give some good at bats and late in the game at least was trying to make it close. So I still think there's something there, Mike. I mean, I can't say it's all dead because, you know, it's interesting. The 73 team had better pitching. Like those guys never got hurt. Steve Matt, like Kuzman. Um, so the pitching was better and Tug McGraw is better than Diaz. George Stone won 12 games, but I, I don't know if he's better than anybody who just happened to win 12 games that year. Um, but this he, this team has allegedly better hitting. It hasn't really done it all year, but if they actually did it for like three or four weeks, it would probably be enough. So it, it's just a mind-boggling well, kind of team. Well, the, the, this team's offense, I think, purportedly is better than that 73 team. Yeah. So, I, you know, so – but the, the thing I look – and, and pl- please – uh, Trevor Williams makes Andrew Heaney look like Sandy Colfax. And that's, you know, so, so, you know, don't, don't pee on me and tell me it's raining when it comes to going out and getting a pitcher. Yeah, you got an arm. He's not even a major league arm. You needed somebody who could fit into your rotation and take starts and give yep. you, give you, you know, give you a little bit of a cushion. They didn't do that. They, I think they cheaped out, which is ridiculous since, you know, M- Mr. Multi-Billion, uh, Steve Cohen said, you know, the, basically the same thing as the Pagulas did in Buffalo. I'll just, you know, I'll just open up a ch- another account like he was going to tap another oil well. Well, you right. know, I'm sorry. Where, where is it? If you, if you don't want to go over the cap, then you should have said that, uh, before. And it sounds to me like, you know, somebody is keeping him, ch- keeping him in check. And I won't say who, Sandy. No, you can say who. It's Sandy Olson. We know. And so, end of the day, let's transition you, Mike. You, you, you mentioned the Yankees. They did fortify their lineup greatly. I mean, that's, that's one scary lineup now, but they still don't have a ton of pitching. And you're probably worried, is it going to be enough to get through these dog days? Well, I mean, as soon as the deadline happened, all of a sudden they lost 60% of the rotation because Cole and Montgomery were on the COVID list and yep. uh, Domingo Herman uh, had, a, I think it was a shoulder issue or an elbow issue. They, they, they think they were precautionary putting him on the IL and then they lost Chapman. So, I mean, it's like they, they for all the additions that they've made, you know, now Glaber Torres is on the IL. Rizzo has COVID, you know, Luke Voigt was, came right back off the IL and right at, right into first base. They have 19 players either injured or on the COVID list. It's ridiculous. So the fact that they're within, I think, a game in the loss column of the second wild card is a friggin' miracle because, you know, it's, this has been patchwork and, you know, uh, they've called up, uh, this, uh, G- uh Luis Gilles, um, mm-hmm. his two shutout outings. Uh, you know, he, so he's, you know, a young kid who looks pretty good. They have a, they called up a, uh, reliever named Ridings from AAA who's throwing 100 miles an hour. So, you know, the, you know who's been good team. though? I'll tell you who's been good is Nestor Cortez. He's actually been yes. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And they've, uh, and he's been a, a good spot starter all year. So they're finding ways, like a couple of years ago, they're finding ways to win. But, you know, I think the thing that's going to get them over the hump and as I'm, Talking about this, uh, the player I was going to re- reference, John Carlos Strat- Stanton, hits into a double play. They need mm-hmm. Stanton and Judge to come come through, and uh, you know I think most of this year Stanton hasn't, and Judge has been pretty good. But they they need their big guys, to, the ones that are healthy, to come through. Well, you got Rizzo and uh, well Rizzo's on the uh, Rizzo's on the COVID list, and oh, Joey Gallo. Right. On, you have Gallo still, yeah. Rizzo's, you know. Nico, it's interesting with this lineup. Uh, the uh, the Field of Dreams game is coming up, and everybody's expecting Gallo to hit one in the uh, in the cornfield. But aside from that game, what do you think about the Yankees? What do I think about the Yankees? Yeah, you know the Yankees are in trouble. They're just not the same Yankees. Uh, DJ Lemayhew, I mean. He's trying. All right, he's just not the same DJ Lemayhew. I don't know if they uh, they figured him out. We're used to him getting on base at least two to three times a game, at least counting on him to score one or two runs. Um, and then, you know, the big guys, Judge, I'm expecting a lot more from him. You know, he's been, you know, hurt prone almost every single year. I mean, but this guy with the talent that he has should easily have 50 home runs by now or close to Otani at least. And the same thing with the big Stanton guy. So the Yankees – 
um, have so much promise, but they're, they're really under delivering. So, you know, as far as this year, I think this year is over and I think it's time for them to start planning on these young guys. Uh, instead of keeping him uh, down on the minor leagues like the sheet he threw the two shutout uh, games, keep him on the roster and reward him. And when you reward success, you'll see some other players be fired up instead of sending the guy back down because of procedures and paperwork. No, this guy's our horse right now, and he's the only one shutting teams out, and he's right here on this roster every single day in the dugout with us. Well, Mike, you uh-huh. retort? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll agree with Nico that uh, that LeMahieu has been disappointing. I think he's hitting in the 260s right now. Uh, let's see here, uh, 266. So he's not anywhere close to what he's been the last couple of years. Uh, and, and in spite of that, I mean, the Yankees have won nine of their last 11. They've gained five games in the standings on the Red Sox. I mean, they're right in. Now, did I expect them to win the AL East? Of course. They're not going to put in the AL East if Tampa Bay keeps playing the way that they are. But I think they're going to, I think right at this point, you know, they're going, they're probably going to get one of those two wild card spots. Either Oakland drops out or the Red Sox are, you know, the Red Sox are doing their 1978 imitation. Um, and, and they have COVID problems too because JD Martinez just tested positive. So, and then they really didn't do anything at the deadline other than trade for uh, an injured Kyle Schwarber and Hansel Robles that, that, that'll, that'll burn up the, the phone lines. So I, I, you know, I mean, I agree that the Yankees have been disappointing. They were uh, up until about three weeks, you know, three, two to three weeks ago, you know, they were just middling and, you know, 500 at best. They've, with the additions that they had, they've turned it on. And now with even, even through some of the losses of, of players and some of them are not permanent, but you know, they're playing Brett Gardner. Uh, they're playing, uh, John, uh, Jonathan Davis in, in, in center field. Now Tyler Wade is playing shortstop. I mean, it's patchwork, but they still have a pretty good team. And right now they're, they're, you know, they're playing fairly well. So I, I don't think it's as dire as, uh, as Nico is saying. Yeah, the one thing I'll add is the Blue Jays are really nipping at their heels, and if they get any kind of pitching, I mean, George Springer's on fire. Like, he's right now the best hitter in the league for the last two weeks. I don't, I don't think it's the Red Sox or the A's that the Yankees should fear. I think it's the Blue Jays, and, you know, the Blue Jays have kept pace with them. And, you know, We've talked, we've glowed about their, their lineup about, uh, you know, now Springer coming back. But look at their rotation now. Uh, you've got Ryu. You've got Robbie Ray, who's pitched really well. You've yeah. got, uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, Manoa, the young kid. They, they acquire Berrios and Steven yeah. Matz. I mean, their, their rotation is pretty good. Their, their it's bullpen, I still think is, is a little questionable, but the offense that they have covers up a lot of ills. And you saw that in that 9-8 game that they had. They came back against the Red Sox. I mean, I'm sorry. The Red Sox are cratering. I don't know. Maybe reality has finally set in. Because nobody expected them to be at the top of the American League East. And now, since I think July 1st, they're like seven or eight games under 500. they They're not playing well at all. Nico, any thoughts on the uh, Blue Jays? I love the Blue Jays. I love their energy. I love Springer. And I love their playing games in Toronto again. In Canada, hey, welcome back to the game, Canada. And uh, you've got a fascinating team. And they're going to make a run. I, I, I'm saying the Blue Jays are in. And the Yankees are out. Okay. Watch it, Nico. They watch it, Nico. They, they were they were very much at home in Buffalo. Buffalo is a nice place. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the Chicago White Sox, Nico. Uh, they're dominating their division, but really, what is their division? Cleveland, Detroit, Kansas City. Now, Minnesota's had a very disappointing year. They were they used to be a good team. They're minus seventy three differential. They they've got problems, but but that whole division is pretty much garbage uh should we be giving the white Sox and tony larusa great credit or we are are we saying they're really just taking advantage of playing against a lot of bad teams but they're a good team they're they're a great team I and mean, you should give them a lot of credit all right and it starts from the top jerry reinsdorf he had a big decision to make um he, he fired i was disappointed with the firing with the uh, the last management and I was disappointed when they brought Little Russo in because this is the job any manager is licking his chops to have because the White Sox have assembled uh, a, a, a dynasty team. I mean, this team is ready to win the World Series. And now they've just got their new uh, young Lewis Robert back, 
And mm-hmm. I think they're going to be uh, kicking it into full gear coming to the dog days. And uh, I I can see maybe four or five losses, and that's about it for the rest of the year on the White Sox. Uh, they're ready to go for the uh, to make a run at it. And I think this is their year to win it if they can beat the um, Dodgers. Okay, I mean, and that's the big thing. The whole world is saying if we could beat the Dodgers, even the Padres sure. are saying that. So, I mean, that's the way it goes, right, Mike? I mean, that's it's, it's yeah. I mean, the Dodgers are, are the team that everybody's looking up at, um, and you know, because you know, they they base seem, seemingly do not have an unlimited budget, and you know, they, they don't really care what anybody thinks. If you know, Kershaw gets hurt or Bowers on uh, on uh, you know leave right now with his situation, they go out and trade for Max Scherzer. We're talking about the White Sox. I like I love their rotation. They they add a great reliever. Uh, in Kimbrell, who's having a fantastic year. So they have Kimbrell and Hendricks and Kopik, uh, you know, uh, uh, who's sort of gone in between starting and relieving. I mean, they, they're really, their, their rotation and their bullpen is deep. I just think the general manager who traded Kimbrell for Nick Madrigal should be shot. That yeah, is I an apple, so. apps. Yeah. Absolutely, completely asinine deal. Now, if, what, what is the reason for that? They're going all out. To win with La Russa as the manager, I think probably that's the that's the stamp of approval. They have you know they have young guys like Jimenez and Luis Robert or Robert, however you pronounce his name, yep. and they have some good veteran hitters. I mean, this is a really impressive team, but you don't trade a guy who's going to probably be your second baseman for the next ten to fifteen years and a for really even, high average hitter, fast, steals bases, yeah. hits Cubs doubles fans. and triples, yeah. Cubs fans are going to go nuts for this guy for the next decade, and every time he wins a batting title or gets in an All Star game, the you know the Cubs fans are going to tell the White Sox fans to stick it, you know where, because that it, it was a completely ridiculous deal. And you know when the when the Cubs were basically emptying the coffers, you know, giving away Anthony Rizzo and paying his salary, the fact that they got Madrigal in the deal. For, for, for Kimbrell is just insane. So I, I you know, they is, could, is this history series. repeating itself, Mike? I mean, the Cubs once got Ryan Sandberg from the Phillies that way. Yep. Yeah. No, no, it, it, that's a very, that's a very good comparison. I mean, and I can't even remember who they got him for, but you know, he was, he was sort of, yeah, he was blocked by It was by probably Manny. someone like Dick Ruthven and who knows who else. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was blocked by Manny Trio in Philadelphia. So they decided, yeah. okay, we're going to, we'll trade him. And they got basically nothing for him. And then he, you know, it became a Hall of Famer. I don't, I'm not going to say Madrigal's going to be a Hall of Famer, but I think he's going to be an all-star. And this is just a dumb trade. Yeah. Nico, thoughts? Nico, are you still there? All right, Nico, you're, 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 you're muted. Oh, go ahead. Nico. Oh, yeah, no, sorry about that. Yeah, I was on mute. I got my little grandbabies here running around, so I had to mute them out of here. But, yeah, I've definitely got to say Cy Max. And I know we're not going to talk about the Dodgers. Nobody wants to talk about the Dodgers. The Dodgers yeah. just keep on winning. And when it looks like they're down, they get a guy like Cy Max. And, uh, and then they get a guy thrown in the trade, a guy like Trey Turner, who just uh, is a yeah. phenomenal young player. He doesn't get a lot of the respect that he should get respect. He's one of the best shortstops. He's been one of the top players in the game for the top their last, uh, I think, four to five years. Yeah. Really and under the radar. Scherzer, and they have Scherzer, who makes the whole world forget about Trevor Bauer even existing, really. Exactly, and that's the whole thing, and nobody's talking about Trevor Bauer anymore. Now they're talking about the Dodgers really have a chance again to go back-to-back like their original uh, goal with with signing uh, Trevor Bauer is to go back-to-back. And uh, and I think they've got it signed, sealed, and delivered now. There's no reason now. The Dodgers are on fire. The Dodgers are the team to beat, and if you don't beat them, um, you're never going to win. One of Nico's favorite teams – the Houston Astros are currently in first. Um, mm-hmm. Even though they, even though most baseball fans hate them, they they're seemingly thriving now. And they called up Jake Myers, who was hitting three forty three in the minors. So, Mike, uh, you know, say what we want about the Astros, but they are winning. Oh yeah, I, I, it's infuriating, but you know, you can't say that, you know, that. Uh, 
that Altuve and uh, Bregman and those players aren't good. It's just they're cheaters, and they'll always be cheaters. They'll have, you know, like they'll have the scarlet letter imp- imprinted on their chest, you know, along with the mic that they used um, or or the buzzer. Um, but, yeah, no, no, you, I mean, I'm sure they're being watched, you know, very carefully, uh, but you can't – I mean, I, I was at a – Blue Jays Astros game and everybody was booing Altuve and he hit a leadoff home run and he basically said stick it to you and he did that against mm-hmm. the Yankees in that in that one in that one game. You got to give them credit for being good players. I, the question I have and this I've heard this brought up, you know, Altuve was on a Hall of Fame path. I don't know whether he's even going to be considered anymore because if he's a che- if he was basically admitted as a cheater, I don't know whether they'll they'll let him in. He's just as much of a cheater as Alex Rodriguez and Rafael Palmero and all the steroid cheats. It's just a different kind of cheating. Nico, your thoughts? Wow, no, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, very strong, Mike, because. Altuve is on his way to the Hall of Fame, and I'm sure he'll wear his Hall of Fame plaque with the cheater engraved in it. If you anybody who wants to call him a cheater, uh, because like I said, people have been uh, you know trying to get an advantage in this game any way they can when it looks at uh, signs, and that's just part of the game. If you're, I mean, if you pick up a sign and you take that to your advantage, you're actually a smart player. Um, so hey, go ahead. Altuve, keep doing what you're doing, keep swinging, keep leading off the games with home runs because you're the reason why the Astros are are still in it every single year. So something that I saw that just, to me, was vile, and I'm going to talk about it, uh, and it's not the incident in Colorado with, um, with Lewis Brinson. That was just beyond vile. This one's a little more under the surface. Like, that one was obvious. Uh, This one, and this is reported by the New York Post, says Major League Baseball, Mike, is in talks with Barstool Sports to broadcast games. Barstool Sports broadcasting baseball. Your thoughts? Uh, Barstool Sports is, and, and this is, to be kind, I would consider them the National Enquirer or the TMZ of sports. That might be where they're go- where you know. I'm probably, I'm probably uh, you know being kind to them, or mm-hmm. they'll probably think that that's a that's a that's a uh, a compliment. But to my mind, it's not. I mean, I think they're sensationalistic. I think they're crass. I think they're and and but you know they're successful and they're. I heard they were. There was talk about them merging with uh, another entity. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, I mean, if they're getting into broadcasting like YouTube or other outlets, I mean, I, Major League Baseball is going to go wherever the money is, and if they can make money going to barstool sports, I'm not surprised. Would I, will I? But that's not going to grow the game, though. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. But I don't think Major League Baseball knows where to grow the game. It certainly is not putting a runner at second base in the 10th inning. It's certainly not some of the some of the hoops and the circus bull crap that Rob Manfred has pulled over the over the last year or so. I hope that when they get back to a regular situation next year when covid is sort of in the in the rear, rear view mirror that they get away from the, you know, seven inning double headers and some of the other things that they've done that I just find abhorrent. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that Barstool is, is going to get involved in Major League Baseball and, you know, nothing surprises me anymore. Well, Nico, I mean, they, they've been declined credentials for sports because of the way they act and because of the, uh, conduct that they have on their network. And they've been allowed to advertise. Nico, you're going to have to mute that or something. That's really bad. Okay, I'm about to speak. How about if I just speak over it for now? <laughs> okay, well, so, yeah, they, they've been denied credentials in different sports and, you know, because of the way they act online and everything else. And some sports have let them advertise but not let them cover the sport. This sport may actually be dumb enough to let them cover the sport just for money. What, what are your thoughts? Absolutely. We live in a world where it's very, very liberal. 
all right? And these guys take liberalism to the wild side, okay? And they're having fun with sports and they're having fun with with uh, humanities and um, and they're making a lot of money. And when you look at the uh, end of the day, you know, capitalism has always won. And um, and hey, welcome to the game, Barstool Sports and your sports book. I cannot wait to be able to put ten dollars on the New York Mets to win the World Series, okay, and break well, the uh, and curse because but, but you that's can do what that the now. relationship is all about. No, with Barstool yeah, you can do Sports. That. You can- with, with, no, you can with. do that on you can you can you can do that on FanDuel, but but the the thing yeah. the thing is th- this this is the thing if bar if all of a sudden Barstool is a rights holder is is involved with Major League Baseball does that mean that Major League Baseball is going to give them credentials to every ballpark? I would think that oh. they would because and, oh, and that's boy. the thing do you do you really want Dave Portnoy in your press box ripping you know doing whatever he does doing his his Mau Mau act? I mean, you know, I, I'm not trying to create enemies here, but here he because he probably doesn't care what the hell I say. But honestly, it's like it's it's a it's abhorrent. I I mean, I don't care what politics he is. I just care about having some decorum when it comes to sports. And they promote sort of this, I, I you know, I think guerrilla type of coverage that I don't I don't think is good for sports. I think it's going to hurt media more than help media. But that that you know, people seem to think. This is great. If I may interject again, all right, because I just learned my lesson. I'm over here trying to challenge Mike Tyson and anyone in the world, and these guys are telling me, hey, how many followers you got? I mean, it doesn't matter how much skill I got. I could be the best baseball player in the world or the best boxer in the world, but if I don't have any followers on social media, then I'm nothing. My value is nothing. So when you look at Barstool Sports and the new capitalist, uh, you know, e-commerce, social media uh, juggernaut, um, they have hundreds of millions of uh, views daily. Uh, they have uh, broken uh, records when it comes to views on sports views and highlights. And, and, um, yeah. and like I said, they're, so like I said, Major League Baseball is joining in with them because they are, they're going to capture a whole audience uh, that the game has never seen before. And the game well, is open to everybody. And everything well, you said, sorry, yeah. everything you said, Nico is correct. And, that doesn't make them good. You know, they can have a, they can have three million followers. It just, you know, there are people on Twitter that have millions of followers who are reprobates. And right. that's the thing. It's like, so, I mean, the fact that they have, have lots of followers does not mean that the, the, what they do is, is good. Um, they can do whatever they want. This is the open, you know, this is capitalist society and a free market. And, they, and if there's an audience for what they, what they provide, then that, that's, you know, they, they can do whatever they want. I'm, I don't begrudge them that, but it's not something, uh, that I watch, not something that I've ever really, uh, by, only by accident have I, have I seen what they, what they do. And honestly, I, I just, I just turn it off whenever I see it. Nico, I'll give you an example. You, you know, you have a buddy in Matt Vesgersian, and, you know, I could see Barstool, like, just, you know, ripping on him for, like, half a broadcast one day because, you know, they just don't like something he did, and that's what they do. They they always send people online to attack other people on Twitter when they speak badly about them, and this is just not the right mentality for baseball to, to really get involved in, I think, especially online. They Baseball has not had a great – presence on social media this is not going to improve it it may get them more followers but it's not going to improve their the way they're looked at online the way they're viewed you could be right you know what i mean and you guys like i said you guys got to do your due diligence and and you got to discern uh where the game is going and and the value is it worth the value and hey that's a big decision major league baseball has said hey they haven't seen anything criminal so far so hey they've uh they went ahead and uh, gone no, with there's it. Nothing we'll criminal, see. You may be, like, you may be is right. Is that what it takes? Is that what it takes? It's going to take something criminal for them to say, okay, now we can't do it. No, there's nothing criminal. We're not suggesting that. But I'm just saying, is that no, the bar? It, is that the line? Do Do we really want an outlet? Like, and we saw this, Russ, when it came to, I think it was 2019 during the Stanley Cup playoffs where, the, you know, they were sort of, is somebody involved with Barstool was instigating fights at the TD Garden in Boston. Do mm-hmm. we really want that kind of element? If, if Major League Baseball wants to go, you know, go that direction, 
I guess, you know, that's if Rob Manfred thinks that that's the way that the sport should go just to get more eyeballs uh, on MLB.com or their at bat or listening on their at bat app or watching games, be my guest. It's not, I don't think it's a good way to go. That's the key. It's all about gaming. Barstools is about gaming. They have a sports book and they have a fan base. Believe me, there's a Mm -hmm. lot of fans out there who haven't read a book. In uh, about you know twenty years or something like that, and all no, they do not, are they're wild and that. crazy, and that's their fan base, and and they, they've got a fan base. Yeah, we're not ripping on them. We're not trying to to act like we're academics here and ripping on that. We're just saying we don't think it's good for the game, and just because someone like Bryce Harper likes them doesn't mean it's good for the game. Like Bryce Harper is good for the game, but it doesn't mean they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's, bro- there's a big difference. And who's to say that Bryce Harper doesn't like what they do as self-preservation against them attacking him? You know, yeah. because that, they go after players. They, they, you know, whether it be in social media or whatever, you know, it's self, it's a, it could be a self-defense mechanism. I better make friends with these guys because they could be really bad to me or really affect me if I don't do that. It's like, I mean, that, that, you know, are you going to like start liking things out of fear? I mean, I don't know if that's the case, but I'm just saying it's possible that, 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 that would be the reaction of some people. So I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't know the, the, in the, the future, you may not be able to get a job if you don't actually support or like a certain company. Because they're so powerful in the corporate relationships that, I mean, I'm sure his best friend and Bezos, they may be going to Mars together. <laughs> well, whatever. Well, I, could, you but, know, that, that's, I, I'm going to leave the Mars thing out of this. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, is, there, is it a one-way trip? Okay. But I just want to remind people, in 2019, you know, Barstool was banned from the Super Bowl. Yeah. And, Nico, the, the NFL is kind of wild and crazy. Don't you agree? Yes, yes, but they don't need fans. I mean, they've got so many fans. I mean, no, they, that's true. They that's a, that's a on, fair on, point on, on, on sporting events. They can be discriminating. They can be. That's true. So you know, at any rate, and you know, there are plenty of other stories you can look at online. We're going to get off the subject, but the idea is, I don't know, Nico. A long time ago, when we wrote our book, Strike Three, you talked about, you know, preserving the game, growing it. For the betterment of the game, I'm not seeing a lot of that lately. I don't know about you. No, actually, it's lost. It's lost, and then uh, we may even have a shutdown again. It's kind of disturbing. Yep. We're going to get really excited about the World Series. We're going to have a great World Series, going to win, and then we're going to go right into a labor stoppage and some some very, very tough negotiations and a lot of money to share. So hopefully they come out of it, but I think – we may be running into some uh, some challenges well, here. Well, here here's an interesting thing because we have seen a number of teams, including the Yankees, um, be so concerned about the two hundred and ten million dollar luxury tax, and they're going into a new CBA where you don't even know whether there is going to be a luxury tax. So why would they be so concerned about it? I mean that that I. Yeah, it's like, okay, the luxury tax might, you know, they may, not to say they'll do away with the system. I'm sure that Major League Baseball is, but, but I'm sure the, the, the Players Association is going to want to get rid of some of these teams not having, you know, not their, not being a salary cap floor where you see the Pittsburgh Pirates spending, you know, less than what Bryce Harper makes on their entire roster. I mean, I'm sure they're going to want a floor so these teams have to spend money. And, you know, they're probably going to have to give up something to get that. So, I mean, I, I agree with Nico. I think this is going to end up being a shortened season next year. I think it's probably I, – I wouldn't be surprised if they don't start baseball until May or June. Yeah, I mean, Nico, the last thing I'll say – and you're right, Mike. The last thing I'll say, Nico, is there's more haves and have-not teams than ever before. An example would be the NL East. Nobody in the NL East has a ch- – chance in the wild card race you have to win that division or you're not going to make the playoffs even with the expanded playoffs you know we talked about how the white Sox are dominating their division you know there's four other teams that are going to do nothing this year so now that's like eight teams that i've mentioned in two different leagues that have no chance at this point in the season to win there's so many teams that are out of it right now yeah and i don't know if that's designed purposely when these no when no, they no. Make it just, it's just it's just happened it's just happened yeah yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying, but they, when they schedule it out, are they, are they thinking about, hey, 
you know, who's going to win. I know teams are when they go into the, uh, before the year, they found out, they plan out their whole schedule and say, Hey, at the end of the year, we're going to be 90, you know, and, um, what is it? Uh, what is it? 60? 73. 90 and 73. Okay. 72. Sorry. 172. 72. Okay. So yeah. So they plan out their, their schedule and their wins and they, and they estimate how many games they can win. Um, so when you're, when you're planning the schedule and you're coming down to the dog days and you're kind of to see who's going to win, uh, is it kind of master plan um, that only these teams are going to win because they were able to beat up on the Pittsburgh Pirates most of the year or something like that? They had a better schedule, and that's not as uh, as uh, as talked about as in other sports when you look at football because it's just just a short season. But with baseball, um, there's a lot of teams just beating up on the bottoms, and then they've yeah. got a, a you know like 600 uh, winning percentage. Yeah. Yeah, no question. All right, that's good for the game, and we'll catch everybody next time. My man.